Hi everyone, Peg here. Um, I've been working on a journal and I was doing a few things today, one of which was creating some papers, which are these, um, using stencils and using pigment powders and I started doing a video with that and I wasn't really happy with the results. I may end up putting something up and I may not. Um, the one thing that I find is very humorous is I can get my stencils really clean washing them. Look at these hands. I'm sorry. That powder is supposed to be water soluble, right? Soaks right into my hands. All right. Anyway, <laughs> enough said. Um, what I was doing was um, I've, I've got a page here that I want to start on. This is a jelly print. Um, and what I started out with was some uh, papers that... You know, I have an assortment of papers in here, and I'm going to make my own book. And some of you saw that I had posted this uh, yesterday. It was a page that I had done, and this is done on some mixed media paper. And you can see that the mixed media paper was thin, so it, you know, it wrinkles and stuff. But I figure once it gets flattened out in a book, it isn't going to make a lot of difference to me. But the cool thing about it is I used some of the Tim Holtz or Ranger Crackle Medium. Look at that. Can you see it? I love it. Anyway, um, so when I was doing this, I thought, well, I wonder if people understand about stitching and sewing. Um, I've done a number. Let me grab a book here. I've done a number of different journals like this and and you can see that these are all signatures that are stitched in here. This is one signature, two, three, four, five. This book has six signatures and it's sewn in on a piece of, this is leather, this is a piece of leather on the outside of this one. and. So what you do to make a signature, if you've never made your own journals before, is you gather the papers together that you're going to that you're going to use. And I these are papers that I'm going to use on this particular page or one of those pages. So I've got mm, you know about five five folded pieces of paper here that are the same size as these other ones that I've already created. And I just folded it in half. And what you want to do is work with an awl. Um, I have a cutting mat and I have some foam here. And I'm going to get my ruler. Somewhere, I have a ruler. Uh -huh. Hold on. Okay, so here's my ruler. Now this is a nine inch piece here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in from the edge at four and a half. And I like to work with an awl um, or paper piercer. Now, paper piercer is thin and you can break if you're going through things like leather. Um, they're not really made for going into things that are heavy duty. This is a heavy duty paper awl and it's going to hold up a lot better to going through layers of things. The one I really prefer is a tapered one like this. Um, now this is this is a regular paper piercer, but what I do is if you have to go through heavier things is I take some scrap clay and I just make a handle on the end of this so I've got a little more than that little pencil type thing that they come out with. Now this is uh, an awl and you can see it has a tapered shaft. So it's a lot stronger because it has this tapered shaft. And when I go in here, and I'm going to four and a half. 
and push right in there, it has no problem making my hole, okay? Now, because that's at four and a half, and this is nine inches, half of that would be two and a quarter, so I'm gonna go to two and a quarter. And the same thing on the other end, I'm gonna go to two and a quarter, right in the fold and make my places to stitch, okay? Now these are very sharp, you can hurt yourself, so be sure and, you know, put your cap back on or stick this into some foam or something, you know. If you've got a foam pad like this, just stick them in the end so that, you know, you're not killing yourself with it because those will do some damage. Now, if you haven't worked with, um, this sort of thing before. This is uh, linen thread. It's a waxed linen. And because it has the wax on there, it clings to itself and to other things. And um, you can get it in different colors. Uh, this happens to be a four cord. And of course I got my needle stuck in there because I don't want to lose my needle. So let me grab something and pull it out. And you want to work with a needle that's got a big enough eye to accommodate this wax thin it, linen thread. And the best way I've found to thread these is an old uh, trick I learned when I was doing beading is to flatten the end. See, I don't know if you can see that or not. The end is flattened out. And then you get it between your thumb and forefinger and really squish it and then come in with the end of your needle and slide it down over that squished end and you can see that it goes right in easily and that's a pretty thick cord okay and then you're going to need you know three or four lengths depending on what you're planning on going through later to sew this up. And I like to leave some cord because if I want to bind it differently or um, put some beads on or you know whatever I determine I want to do later with it, I like to have some extra cord. So grab some scissors here and cut that off. And I'm going to start now, depending on whether you want the knot on the inside or on the outside is how you're going to begin. Um, because I'm going to knot on the outside because I'm going to have a cover over it, I'm going to start on the outside and come through the middle hole. I'm going to leave a generous tail on there and I'm going to go through one of the other holes. It doesn't matter whether it's the top or bottom but I just want to get my needle threaded through and then I'm going to go all the way to the opposite end and go through there and then back through the original hole and you want to come up on the opposite side you see how this is on one side of the cord and this one is on the other side because you're going to knot it there you're going to pull it taut and you're going to knot that on that spot. And then I have enough, if I want to stitch more signatures or do other stitching, I have enough cord left that I'll be able to do that. Now, if you don't care, if you're not, if you're not stitching things together, if you're just gluing things together, you don't need this extra cord. But on a journal like I was showing you, if you're going to come back and you're going to stitch through the outside here, you're going to need some cording to do that with, okay? Because these are all stitched in. And that's a real simple one. You can see on this one I have one, two, three, four, five, six different places where these signatures are stitched, okay? So just depends on how securely you want these in here. Okay, so I'm going to keep going because I've got 
I've got my signature now and I'm going to start working on some of these because I'm going to create a book. And the other thing is these clips come in real handy for holding your papers together. So um, if you're having difficulty holding things together, get some clips. Bye for now, guys.